we're now ready to start pulling everything together, and we do this with the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, in this case, part one. And it's not nearly as bad as it looks, so just bear with me here. Let's go through this line by line and put these pieces together. It's really quite an incredible theorem. It says if f is continuous on closed interval a, b, then the area function, which we're familiar with, a of x, which is the integral from a to x of f of t dt, so remember our x in this case is giving us the upper limit of integration. It's not the x that we're taking the integral with respect to, it is the upper limit of our integration as we, as we carve out this area. So a of x equals the integral from a to x of f of t dt, for a less than or equal to x, less than or equal to b, so x of course is between a and some b. So let's draw this out a little bit. So here we have our nice smooth uh, function here, f of t is, is continuous, is differentiable, no corners, no discontinuities. Our area function is defined as the area under it um, up to some x that is between a and b. That's what we've said so far. What it tells us is this area function is then continuous on the closed interval a, b, and differentiable on the open interval a, b. Okay, that's good news, so we can do stuff with it. And here's the kicker. The area function satisfies a prime of x equals f of x. So for the first time here, we've tied the derivative to the area. And that's a huge deal, right? Because we've been doing two things. We've done antiderivatives which we called the integral, and then we did areas, which we've called the integral. So really we have two definitions of integral going on here, and what this fundamental theorem of calculus does, which is why we call it fundamental, because it's so fundamental, is it says these are actually the same thing. Right? It tells us if we take the derivative of this area function, we get our original function that we're computing the area under back. So now we have the derivative, the area, and the original function all tied together in one theorem, which really opens everything up. Because now we can ditch that limit definition of the integral with the Riemann sums and all that, which was quite cumbersome, and instead use antiderivatives. And that's the whole point. What this tells us is we can now use antiderivatives, which we've been calling integrals, to find areas under curves, which we've also been calling integrals. So it makes sense. The integrals and the integrals are equal. They're the same integral. So that's good news. Right? We should even probably put an exclamation point in here because it's such a big result. Because from here on out, we don't need to use these tiny rectangles anymore. We can simply use the antiderivative. And the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that the antiderivative and the tiny rectangles are the same thing. And personally, I'd much rather compute an antiderivative than compute the sum of an infinite number of infinitely thin rectangles. So this really opens everything up. Now, how to use this theorem in particular? We'll, we'll talk more about this in the part two of the theorem, but first off, we have this equivalently a prime of x, which is d by dx of the integral a to x of f of t dt equals f of x. This is the easiest theorem to use probably in the whole course, and you'd be surprised at how many people get this wrong. We're going to do a specific example just with this, so what this says is if you take this function and integrate it and then take the derivative of that, well, since we now know that the antiderivative and the area function are the same thing, when we take the derivative of the antiderivative, we get the original function back. So when we take the derivative of the integral, the area function integral, we get the original function back. Just note that now it's going to be a respect to x because we integrated this thing and then we we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So it's a little f now of x. Okay, just rounding out what this theorem says, it says, which means that the area function of f, so this here is a of f, the area function of f, uh, sorry, a of, a of uh, x, is an antiderivative of f. That's the antiderivative of f of t dt on a, b. So that really ties it all together, and this second version here is how we actually use it. So let's focus on that for actually using this theorem to compute some things. And then we'll dig a little deeper with part two, which is probably the more useful version of the theorem. Okay, computationally, if you take one thing from the fundamental theorem of calculus part one, other than the fact that it's profound and that it completely opens up calculus for us, but computationally, what it tells us is anytime you see the derivative of an integral, you don't work the integral first and then try to take the derivative of it. That's the tricky part it tells us that you just essentially 
the derivative of this integral are undoing each other, and you're getting the function back. And so for now, it's a function of x instead of t. That's all it tells us. Let's look at an example, and I'll show you how so many people get this wrong. Okay, here we go. For example, we have the derivative d by dx of the integral from 1 to x of e to the power of sine quantity t plus square root of t. All of that is dt. If we use the theorem, it tells us that when we take the derivative of an integral, we essentially think of these as undoing each other because the integral is an antiderivative, the derivative is a derivative, those undo each other. And what we're left with is simply e to the sine of quantity x plus square root of x. Now, note that I did not take this integral. In fact, I specifically put a function in there that we cannot integrate. You could spend all day doing this. You could take calc 2, calc 3, whatever calc you want. You're not going to be able to work this integral. Right? There are so many functions that we can't even integrate because it just doesn't exist. There, there are ways around that, but in terms of just a nice analytical integral, we cannot do this function. What I see is students wasting a ton of time trying to work this integral so they can go take the derivative of that result. But that's not the point. The point is, if you're taking the derivative of an integral, you're just going to get the same thing back. So all I did was cut and paste this function, except for instead of writing t's, I wrote x's. That is all there is to these kinds of exercises. So probably the easiest point you'll get on an exam is this fundamental theorem of calculus part one questions or on a final. But unfortunately, one of the biggest places where students lose points is also here because they spend a bunch of time trying to integrate a function that's impossible to integrate. So be on the lookout for that.